Hi there, this is Ajit. Welcome to Step by Step Data Science Tutorial. So today we are in part 10, a practical implementation of SVM kernel and influence of C from scratch. So before starting the lecture, let's discuss about SVM, what it does and the use cases of SVM. So here, let's say I have X and Y coordinate and I have two data set. This denotes, sorry. So this denotes my positive value and this coordinate denotes my negative value. So if we apply a logistic regression and draw a line that separates both positive and negative value, then my line would be something like this or it can also be like this as it distinguishes distinguishes both my positive and negative levels. So what the what SVM does is it creates a margin between my positive and negative value. So if we implement a SVM, then my shape would be something my prediction line will be something like this. And I will have one margin here and here. So this, this margin I will have when I implement SBM. So if we have this margin and my main uh, line, predictor line, this will give me more robust, more robust prediction. This will give more robust prediction. And these lines are also sometimes called support vector, support vector and this whole process is even called large margin in classification because we have the prediction line separates our support vectors into two equal half. So this, if we have, if, if we predict something like this and it gives us a line that it distinguishes equal parts from positive and negative value, then we can say that we have implemented support vector machine. So suppose if, if we have an outlier here, in this example, I have outlier. So uh, what would my SVM does? So if, if suppose I have a, my outlier here, so SVM would predict my output something like this. So, but this would not be, uh, good model because by changing only one outlier uh, my my whole prediction is changed so this would this would not be a good module and instead of predicting my output like this i would predict i would uh, predict my output that would show something like this this would be my output line so the, this line depends on my value of C. So if it change, if my C is very large, then I can change my prediction line. So what is C? So, so in logistic regression, we have lambda, which determines which says which overcomes if we set particular value of lambda, it overcomes overfitting issues, right? So the C is in SVM is one by lambda. Okay. So if my if 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 lambda is high, there was high bias. If lambda is low there was high variance. So my C will be opposite, okay? In SVM, C will be opposite. So if C is high, then, if C is high, then I will have low bias and high variance. And my, if my C is low, I will have high 
bias and low variance so in this case if my if i if uh, if i increase my value of c this would predict my module but it would be an overfitting cases where my module is trying to fit each and every point within this uh, plot so we will implement this in in Jupyter notebook now let's see the implementation so this is my library and this is the data set that i have used from Antonin and Coursera course so here is my x and y coordinate so my y has two output j0 and one let's visualize this output so let's write a code uh, to plot my data so so i have two outputs let's say positive is equals to y equals equals one and for neg equals y so we denote positive value as one and negative value as zero so my positive will be one negative will be zero so plt dot plot bracket x or x of us comma zero comma zero comma x of us comma one so give this as Label as kx, comma. Label this as positive. So here will be my g. Let's get this as y o and this will be my negative this to prd dot so 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 s p n dot plot Data x comma y so here we can see one outlier so one outlier is seen in my uh, native data set so we will set uh, the value of c in a way and we will see that if we set if we increase the value of c that would be that would misclassify our training example so we will we will increase and decrease the value of c and and check our result so like i said c parameter tells the svm optimizer how much you want to avoid misclassifying each training examples so c is a reciprocal of lambda the lambda that we used in in logistic regression so if my c is high that means we have low bias and high variance resulting in, in overfitting issue. And if my C is low, that means I have high bias and low variance causing underfitting issue. So let's choose C as one and let's fit our module and do visualization. So if we set C as one, we can see a uh, a linear boundary line which distinguishes both positive and negative cases and the outlier here is not considered this outlier is not considered so now let's iterate my value of c let's set it to 1.0 and let's set it to 100 and let's set it to 1000 now if we visualize this output 
So here we can see if we increase the value of C to 100, so it misclassify, it misclassify our line. The line is changed to, to account all the outliers. So here, if we increase the value of C to 1000, the line becomes more diverse towards the negative value. So here we can clearly see that if we increase the value of uh, C, then our line, the decision boundary line changes drastically. So here the appropriate value of C will be one because it clearly distinguishes my positive and now negative cases. However, we have one outlier here. So if we increase the value of C to 100, this will, will misclassify my module and would even consider the outlier X, one, out, one outlier. So here we can see the influence of increasing the value of C. So now, we, now, now this is the case where we have linear, uh, this is the case where we can uh, draw a linear line and can distinguish positive and negative cases. So how about uh, cases where we have non-linear decision boundary? So let's say if my data is something like this, and if, if, if I need to predict my output, if I need to draw a decision boundary here, my decision boundary would be something like this. Okay, so how can I achieve this uh, decision boundary is through kernel, through kernel tricks. I can achieve this decision boundary. So if we use Gaussian kernel, okay. If we use Gaussian kernel, so my Gaussian uh, kernel is is equals to exp to the power of minus sum of k equals one to n x x k of i minus x k of j all the square divided by two in the square. So if we implement this equation. If we if we apply this this equation, then this will give us this will give us a decision boundary that give us the decision boundary that is non-linear. So uh, if we implement Gaussian kernel, then we can achieve this non-linear decision boundary. So let's try to do that. So let's try to write uh, the formula for both linear kernel. So linear kernel will be same as my linear regression. So it will be dot product of x1 from x2. And my Gaussian kernel will be this equation. So let's say Gaussian kernel gk equals so nk dot axp exponential to the power minus one times np dot sum sum of x1 minus x2 x1 minus x2 whole square divided by Two times sigma times sigma, okay, and return JK. One more that it is missing here. Okay. Now let's check whether my kernel is working right or not. Let's give uh, x1 as np dot array of one comma two comma one and x2 as np dot array 
so it's working fine now this is my data set so if i plot if i visualize this data set then this data set looks something like this so this is a non-linear data so if we apply a gaussian kernel then it would uh, give us the prediction line a decision boundary for for the prediction uh, line non-linear prediction line we will get that, that is similar to this this decision boundary we will get okay so let's if i choose c equals one and sigma equals 0 0.1 and if i apply my gaussian kernel here this is my gaussian kernel this is the formula that i have written right right now and if i do my visualization So here we can see the Gaussian kernel has splitted my data and we can see a decision boundary here. So likewise, let's check another data set. So here even we will apply Gaussian and see what my output is. So before applying Gaussian, we will choose our optimal value of C and, and Sigma. So let's say my C ranges from 0.01, 0.03, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, comma 1, comma 3, comma 5. And so my Sigma so between this. So here I have a fitted a Gaussian module and then I have checked whether my output is equals to is equals to my validation output. So if my error is so I have set my error to 999. So if it is less than the error then we will return then we will get the most optimal value of C and then we return C and sigma. So if I apply this uh, if I choose my optimal value of C, so C it gives uh, C as one. And my sigma is 0, 0 0.1 and this is a module and this is my separator so here we can see my gaussian corner has separated my value into two equal parts so this is how we implement gaussian kernel and how this is how we write gaussian kernel equation and we choose the value of c hope this uh, video was helpful please like and subscribe my channel if you like this video thank you so much